The House has voted to censure Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib over her comments about Israel. Tlaib is the only Palestinian-American in Congress. 22 Democrats joined all but four Republicans voting against their own party member last night. The Congresswoman from Michigan vowed to not be silenced. She gave an emotional address to her colleagues ahead of the vote. Palestinian people are not disposable. We are human beings. Just like anyone else, my city, my grandmother, like all Palestinians, just wants to live her life with freedom and human dignity we all deserve. Meanwhile, members of Congress who have been critical of Israel are facing new political challenges back home. Now, that includes Representatives Cory Bush, Jamal Bowman, Summer Lee, and Ilhan Omar. For more on this, we are joined by Josh Crosshar. He is the editor-in-chief of Jewish Insider and a senior political contributor at Axios. Uh, Josh, thank you so much for joining us. How serious are these challengers, and how likely are they to prevail? Well, uh, thanks for having me. Um, these are very serious challengers, and we've never seen so many members of the, the squad, the, the most left-wing, most anti-Israel uh, Democrats in Congress. We've never seen a real sustained political opposition against them since they were first elected in the last five years. And we now have at least four of the members of the squad. You, you had them on the, on the graphic, Cory Bush, uh, Ilhan Omar, Jamal Bowman, uh, all, all facing uh, credible challengers. These are people who have political experience. They're running from the middle. They are pro-Israel progressives or moderates in all these cases. Uh, many of the candidates are, are challengers of color. They're, they're not, uh, they're, they're, they, they have many of the same values, many of the same issues, but their biggest difference is they're not as hostile to Israel as these, these four lawmakers. And there's a fifth lawmaker. You, you talked about Rashida Tlaib and her uh, censure uh, last night were 22 House Democrats, which is a remarkable number of, of, of her own Democratic colleagues, uh, censured her because of anti-Semitic or anti-very host, hostile comments uh, to Israel um, that she made using a, an anti-Semitic slur on her social media feed from the river to the sea, which essentially calls for the extermination of Israel. Uh, she's now uh, facing some political danger of her own, where uh, there's a pro-Israel group that's spending money on advertising against her, and there's a real look for a challenger in her district around Detroit. And so, Josh, we, oh, 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 sorry, yeah. Josh, I, I, I just, um, obviously we saw how, for her, it is very personal. We saw her holding up uh, the picture of her grandmother. Um, but when you're talking about the challengers being moderates, I was also interested in the 22 Democrats who voted to censure Congresswoman Tlaib. Many of them also moderates within the Democratic Party. Ten of them voted in support of the House GOP's, uh, the GOP-led Israel aid bill, which came um, at a cost for, for Democratic Party unity. I'm just wondering, how much is the conflict in the Middle East displaying a growing divide within the Democratic Party? It's, it's a very deep divide. And, and look, I think it's important to note that when you look at polls and when you look at these votes, the, the vote you're talking about, there was just a small number of Democrats who voted against a pro-Israel anti-Hamas resolution. We're talking about 10 out of over 200 uh, Democratic oh, lawmakers. No, this was, the, fun this was the funding bill, not the, not the resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, just to clarify. But, but I mean, when you look at the polling of Democratic voters, you know, there, there, there's a lot of nuanced opinion when it comes to Israel, but support for Israel has gone up since October 7th, since the terrorist attack uh, of October 7th. And, you know, you, you are really looking at these 10, 15 Democratic members in the House that are sort of out on an island when it comes to these pro-Israel resolutions and condemnations of Hamas that have been taking place in Congress. And uh, look, to leave, Democrats, would it's very hard to censure one of your own uh, in, in Congress, but it was a combination of when it comes to Rashida Tlaib, uh, she essentially put up misinformation uh, calling a you know Islamic Jihad strike, a misfired strike against the hospital in Gaza. She said it was Israel's fault when the evidence suggested otherwise. And she didn't take that down. She didn't correct the record. And then she used the phrase that that's widely seen as, uh, you know, calling for the destruction of Israel. So those two things are just, you know, over the top and and really put Tlaib and, and again, some of these other allied lawmakers in the squad on an island to themselves. Uh, Josh, I want to bring up President Biden also, who is receiving backlash for his support of Israel, specifically in Michigan, where there are reports it could cost him the vote of Muslim Americans. Uh, 
a typically stronghold for Democratic candidates. Looking ahead, could we see this creating an issue for Democrats in races across the country? Yeah, well, look, it, the, the Democratic Party, there's a very loud progressive base that is is uh, younger voters, most the most progressive voters in the party that is more critical of Israel, if not anti-Israel, compared to the majority, the clear majority of Democratic Party voters. Arab Americans, Muslim Americans, who make, which make up, uh, I think Michigan is the state with the largest largest share of, of, of Arab Americans. They're much more critical of Israel, much more anti-Israel. And uh, look, Michigan's a battleground state. So that's a concern for the Democratic Party. I will say, though, that if, if President Biden is in trouble in Michigan, uh, which was a state that backed him by, by three points mm -hmm. in, in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bigger pro He's got other problems. And in, 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 in mm -hmm. if Michigan is a problem state where the Arab vote would make the difference. You know, Pennsylvania is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin's mm -hmm. going to be a problem. So it would, it would, it would be endemic. If, if Michigan really was a tipping point state for the, for the president, it would suggest that there are other more serious issues related to the economy, relating to, you know, other major issues that voters care about uh, that would create a lot of those problems in the first place. Josh Crosshart, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.